Who told you? 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 What's going on? What's up, everybody? What's up with my Borbo buddies? What's going on with the Borbo family? We back, y'all, with another live episode reporting live from the Borbo Castle. That's right. We up in here with all the Borbos. And they saying it's a great day to be a Borbo. We was out, we was out in the rain, we was out in the snow. It was all-star weekend. How y'all is everybody doing today? I hope everybody joining us is having a great day. And then I'm excited to be here as always. We getting ready to have a whole lot of uh, information exchange. I hope everybody can keep up and follow me. I don't talk too fast or nothing like that. But we're really excited. It's a great day, y'all. We had an all-star weekend and all the celebrities was in Cleveland. And I ain't, I ain't see none of the uh, – so there, I ain't see nothing. I didn't see the game because I couldn't figure out how to fit the Borbles in. I couldn't figure out. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to enjoy it from the uh, – put my energy into the dogs. That's what I always end up doing. I said, you know, I'm going to make a – I guess what I did do, though, was we had an all-star puppies. Pancake had a litter of puppies and – that's so that was what, what our event weekend consisted of all star puppies. We didn't get involved with the activities, but it was a little really lit online. But hey, when uh, it, it all comes down to it, they got to have something involved for the dogs in order for us to uh, participate. And we couldn't figure out how we could fit our way ourselves in. What's going on? Let me check out on. What's going on, Ricardo? We just uh, so we're gonna be discussing today. We are uh, developing our progeny since we had a, quite a few litters of puppies, and uh, we've got upcoming breeders. Uh, and I, I, I break this down for y'all, for everybody that's involved, or everybody that's coming along, maybe interested, may not be involved with dogs right away. I mean, it's for all levels of uh, dog experience, not just for somebody that's got extreme experience. So we're going to break things down for elementary because one thing that I uh, point, uh, came to notice is uh, this day and age, a lot of the youth is learning everything off of a line. And, and they, they, I mean, they really isolated and they can get some good uh, uh, information and understanding from this uh from you know from my perspective so i break it down to elementary levels in some cases in many cases i'll do that for in, in uh for the future and for but uh you know you may not know this as an advanced dog owner too so uh what i like to cover though today what we're going to be covering is monitoring and developing your progeny developing your bloodlines after you have a bunch of litters of puppies or after you have a litter of puppies, especially like in the beginning, you got all of these expectations and you think, okay, I'm going to put this dog together and then I'm going to produce this dog. And then you only get so many puppies to observe. And really realistically, it's only fair to keep so many dogs for yourself. And you put the puppies out and people, you want to follow the, your puppy's development because you have an expectation of the litter before you breed it. And then you also want to know the results. You would like to know what is your what is your lines producing um, versus what your idea of the line was. So how do we do that? How would, in the business that we are in, we're going to be placing dogs in homes and we don't know how they're going to care for the dog. We don't know if they, what, what type of environment that has a lot to do with the finality of the dog. Right? So that's why you want to have a good understanding of where your dog is going. And when your dog gets to the home, you want to build a relationship. You think of your dog as a family member. 
And it's and then in all cases, you're not gonna be able to do that. And but you still would like to try to do it as often as, as possible. Is uh so we got one of our young pups here that is uh I would would like to use as an example. I'm gonna share this the guy with you. He's uh something else, he's from our puppy uh litter from targets uli and exotics siaga which is a pancake daughter bred to cairo and from siaga we look at her and she's a muscular dog with a lot of good qualities for a female uh, we know that the line is fertile for, for first of all uh while we consider using her as a highly regarded female because she's from pancake so we're very interested in the development of the lines we did three litters in 2019 and 18 between 2019 and 18 with cairo and we would like to watch those dogs develop and the way that they came from what what, what did they produce from our lines and cairo was the introduction of modern the modern genetics the more recent popular dogs such as the Groenberg, Rambo lines, Middle Post Tristan, um, some of the more modern Africa dog blood lines from the African Borbal kennel. And what he did was he included some unrelated genetics to our program or, in di or distantly related genetics. And because of that, we get expectation of hybrid vigor or heterosis and then we see a wide variation among the, the puppies we have some of uh, taller some are smaller shorter wider thicker but as a breeder what we're going to do is observe what is the common theme what is the reoccurring theme what is the reoccurring trait that keeps on showing and show, uh within the litter throughout the litter that's how we know what which dog is producing what so we use Cairo on Pancake, uh, Remy, and their mom, Coda. Started off with their mom, Coda. And when Remy and Pancake came of age, we used this. So our program is based off of like a development of the lines. We like to use, uh, get a good plan fit. Once we decide that a male is suitable for breeding and he fits our criteria, we have a strict criteria. Remember that. That goes back to our selection process. We Once we figure out that a male fits our uh, selection criteria for a stud dog, meaning that he's athletic, he's powerful, he's got a good temperament, he's uh, got a lot of energy, he can breed on his own, he's a highly impressive male. Once we get those things, all of that, that combination, we got, we're not going for any one particular trait within our program. So that's, first of all, we got a goal within our program. We're trying to develop because you know, what we the exotic line is going to be known for consistently producing powerful, athletic, extremely good-looking dogs that are well-tempered and have drive and energy. So that's what we're looking for. It's more of a totality with us, companionship and temperament. So with that, we would like to take that dog that qualifies and then get a nice uh selection or plan field of his puppies we're going to get maybe three four litters and then we got maybe um 30 40 puppies to follow as they develop and then we have an idea based off of what we can see from that dog his strengths are or his really strong points and then what is he going to produce with our dogs we already know our dogs we're very familiar with our dogs they have the athleticism they have the the temperament that we're looking for the beauty um they have the structure they're not they're not always they and if you go back to our original dog they're not known for having a humongous size but they very complete from head to toe that's 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 always been my thing i like a, a just i'm looking for a well put together dog a beautiful dog i have never been a person that did strictly go for the uh size oh, I, i'm not the biggest dude myself and um uh, so we don't i already know that that size can be overrated and it don't make or break me. It does not, it don't make or break a person. 
it don't make you the uh the 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 baddest dog on the yard so to speak just because you a big dog but so my original dog is pluto and I remember he went uh, i mean floyd mayweather ain't nothing but 130 pounds all right so come on now we're talking about one of the baddest fighters and that's the model or mike tyson ain't even the biggest dude you understand what i'm getting at is it don't it ain't about the biggest it ain't never been about the biggest with me or with my program i I'm, I'm, i got real vision to be able to look like you know behind that to understand that it doesn't have to be it's still 130 pounds is a big dog 103 pounds my original male was 100 106 pounds but if you look at the dog muscle head to toe lean he was athletic he was conditioned so you're talking about very little fat on the dog and when you get into these dogs, that's going to always be my thing, whether it's big or small. I want mine to be athletic and cut and ripped up and powerful and capable and intelligent. So when we start talking about Cairo, I get into Cairo. Cairo is a big, thick. I mean, I, I got my own dogs to breed and um, I'm doing my breeding thing online. And I'm, you know, I'm steady. I've been doing this for a while. I catch up with this. It was fake. It fell into my lap. My boy, uh, what's going on? And then I got my, um, I hooked up with Trez, Man Down, for now known as Man Down Borbles. <laughs> got him going, he's the I got his own thing going now. So um, now you know, we, we hooked up online. Long story short, his dog came into um, existence with my program. And I compared him to the dog that I had come, was getting ready to breed at that time. He fit the bill. I uh, got a large playing field of his uh, puppies. Well, and getting back to um, Siaga is a driven dog, right? So what we do is we maintain and develop these dogs. I got uh, several different varieties of the Cairo to exotic bloodline, right? So I got three or four different females. I got males that I look at and I'm observing and I'm seeing consistently we got drive. We got consistently athleticism, musculature. And on top of that, we still got a, a strong temperament, which what I really liked about Cairo was, uh, you know, he was into involved with protection work, which is something that you don't see a lot of Borbles doing and or is successfully being involved in. And I like a dog that it will give me energy when I'm looking for him. When I tell that dog to giddy up, I'm looking for the dog to go. So uh, you see that a lot in our puppies and in our lines. And uh, so I would like to point out to this dog. Um, we're going to get to this dog, Young Biko, because Young Biko is one of our pups. And um, what you do is we, we continue to develop our lines and do these selections. And we, we eventually would like to refine a type that fits into the um, the uh, beauty of a, the standard. And we can go in and stump them down and on, on the dog shows. We're going to go in. I mean, not to really like uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an aggressive. Well, let me think about this. Not really in a, um, when I say stump them down. We're going to not hurt. We ain't looking to hurt nobody, but we're going to come to the dog show with our dogs and we're going to represent what we do, show our dogs in com com and confirmation and show that we can do the confirmation or whatever. And I ain't never even selected off of really confirmation, but uh, up beyond what I visualize as a uh, ideal energy dog, high energy, uh, highly efficient for what I would like to do. And see, not all of the what, what makes it work is not all of the puppies will be like that and what we have to do is identify the ones that are within the litter and then we we use the we monitor those dogs and we figure how can we include them in the future generations so with this next dog what i'm gonna say let me get to this dog young Biko, and why i would like to point him out and uh why i like to mention young Biko because he's going off okay first let's start here uh Biko is a uh, um let me show y'all this. Biko's on by Jason. He's on the live. What's up, Jay? What's going on? Oh my goodness. I always got ACI deficiency in the in the borbles. We're gonna get to the questions at the end of the show. Okay. We're gonna have a special time for questions. I want y'all to meet Jason uh with the uh Jason Witcher, that is uh my friend, highly regarded. I'm proud to be in his company and had welcome him into the exotic borbo family he's a passionate borbo enthusiast 
a great dude, very involved with his dog. We've been following the dog since he got him. The dog is cutting up. Have, well, he's having a good time being a puppy, doing what puppies do, having a good time. And um, so I wanted to, I, I, I felt that this was necessary and it was a good point to illustrate for anybody that's up and coming and don't have an idea of what's going on or might see uh, when they talk about how borbles can be difficult and not for the inexperienced owner, I would like to sh just kind of highlight the type of um, uh, behaviors that borbles is going to have, especially when you're dealing with exotic. So let's take a look at Biko. He said Biko want to take the dog, uh, older dog's bone. Look at how he acted. Look at how Biko is acting. Biko. Biko, that's enough. Okay. Great stepping in. Break it up. Next, we got Biko. Biko. Biko, that's enough. Okay. So he having a good time. He said he can let him correct it for a while. He let them correct it for a while. You see him throwing that Biko. body, jumping all around. Biko, that's and enough. And then we see Biko getting his hand put down, get the put down to the ground and under control. Isolated. And it's important to um, highlight this right here. Because you want to get this established early on with your Borbal puppy, especially exotic Borbal puppy. I want to um, um, get this established. You see how he's got this dog, he got the dog held down. And uh, you got to put the dog in check. That's something that you're going to have to do with a boy ball. And it's best to get it done sooner than later. Okay? It's best to get it established sooner. And uh, shout out to Jason with his dog, Biko. Really happy to watch him grow up. Thanks for sharing so much. What's up? What's going on? We, um, we happy to, we happy to um, hear his, follow his journey. Um, but what I like to really highlight, though, is... With a board ball, you're going to have, especially a lot, a lot of a, with a dominant one, Some in some cases, they're going to be more energetic and more dominant and more um, up, right? So, and that's cool. And you, you know, you're watching the puppy grow up. He having a good time. But I like to point out how a, the, the owner notices that the dog is a, maybe going across in the line from what he deemed to be acceptable within his pack. And then he decided that this is going too far. He handled the dog and then let the dog know, look, this is enough. This is enough. When I say stop, you got to stop. And if you ain't willing to do that with your dog, if you just willing to say, hey, this dog is just being a pup and he having fun, then this dog really ain't the dog for you. It's not fair to the dog to do it that way. You have to treat the dog as a dog should be treated and he have a right to be treated as a dog should be treated. And that's with strong leadership. And that's with established leadership. That's with consistent leadership. And if you're not able to give the dog that and then able to say when enough is enough with this dog breed, he going to take over. And they could, they could t tend to, uh, they could tend to uh, let them know what up family. Let them know that, yeah, they could tend to get out of control especially uh with, with, with our selection and then this dog you, they tend to get up to 2 300 pounds okay so i also would like to uh hit that like button y'all if you haven't already so yeah i um so we following and watching the dogs develop we have an idea of what we expect from the litter and then we have the actual results so with the with the litter from what well, the reason that we decided to run with targets Uli was because for a, we know that the pedigree is known to produce a certain quality of dogs. When you look at Takara drifter and you look at the other relatives in the pedigree, you know that this is established bloodline. And if you like, so for example, if you look at the dog targets Ram and that's the dog that you like, which is a dog that we feel is, um, a really nice male he got a very well developed front end and they stand up straight and he does a beautiful dog look like he's intense and fierce um a nice representation of the breed 
So in order to get a dog like Targus Ram, the highest likelihood is to go to his father. You don't want to get a Targus Ram puppy. You want to go to Targus Ram's father, which would be Takara Drifter. So then we use Takara Drifter's also his son, which is okay y'all we're gonna go for it that's 10 minutes in we're gonna go for a commercial break real quick i'm gonna get back to that we left off at takara drifter take a look we got to take a commercial break real quick and uh what's up boar buds you all know jordan Pittman, a humble leader of the best african borbal owners and a passionate dog enthusiast for 15 years now he raises south african borbal pups and two dogs beyond what most people expect a large breed would be. And if he can do it, so can you. And he is more than happy to share, help, and teach you about everything you need to know based on his awesome experience raising South African Borbles. You can schedule consultations with him and ask him anything, and I mean anything, and become an awesome breeder. Learn everything that you can from our past experience. Avoid making mistakes that have been made before. Talk, listen, and learn. And vow to one day in the future, share all that you have learned with a newcomer to the breed. If you are ready to be awesome, please reach him on these details for pricing information. Believe he is very excited to chat with you and help you become an amazing breeder. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that, y'all. We had to, well, that was our sponsors. We're from our sponsors. We had to uh, check on Pancake and the puppies. It sounds Pancake be playing games with me. She's a veteran, but uh, she is sometimes lays on the puppies. So some dogs, she, 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 she does that. And but she moves them around and I just heard her squash and sound like she was squashing one. So I decided let me hop up and jump and see just to double check. But she's a veteran. I don't know why do I even um, worry about it with pancake because she knows what to do. Puppies is beautiful. So we left off, we left off talking about the car drifter. So we use targets Uli with the hopes of producing a certain quality of dogs, a world-class quality of dogs. Tokara Drifter is unrelated to our bloodlines. I don't know why this is doing this. But can oh, there we go. Yeah, Tokara Drifter is unrelated to our dogs, our modern dog. He's a modern style Borbo producing dog with the Targets Ram and some of the other dogs that he's already produced. So we used his son, which would mean our puppies would be his grandsons, if that makes sense. High likelihood, which would be equal to producing a son or the same line on the same line of a Targets Ram son. Do you get the idea? So we're trying to produce. That's how we. Uh, that's the idea behind the selection. We're trying to produce the type of quality that targets Ram along with the exotic established with our established bloodlines. We're going to see what those two genetics can bring out. With um, so we use targets, targets uh, Uli, really nice front end, well put together, deep color red. Had a nice straight top line, got a decent amount of energy. Uh, we used them before. His puppies produced very nice. We was excited about them. They um, had deep, heavy black mass, real good energy, substance, uh, very powerful and uh, adults, big, strong chests. Um, they're growing very well, and we like we like what we're seeing from them. So we moving we moving forward with that line. Like I said, we like to get a lot, a nice selection and variety of the dogs to really can see what those, uh, those, we really can see what those dogs are uh, looking like. So <clears throat> we, you, 
instead of just going from dog to dog to dog to dog to dog you want to get and then if you decide okay this this line is consistently producing this trait or feature that we really like then we try to find we don't want to breed like a brother to a sister or a, um we would like to combine that with uh, also unrelated genetics but slightly related because we do want to like to continue our so-called our family of dogs so we do want them to be related that's basically or our line is basic our line is really a true a family of dogs and when you get a dog from us you become part of our family and that's how we treat it as is as such as a family style operation and our puppies are our love like they family and they represent our family and they would they're gonna be we respect them to be treated as such and pretty much they go to the best owners and that's why we're here to help you at all along the way into totality all the way into the faith to the last days if you need us we want to be here so we have some concerns that we wanted to address with some um and we you know we want to put it out there see that's something again you hear pancake back there with the puppies but I won't bring this up because, uh, hey, I, I like to be up front with things. And I feel like we all can help each other, learn something from each other, find out different things. And then we able to move forward and we don't make if we if we did make a mistake, we don't want to make the same mistake again. <sighs> oh, no. Well, one of our puppies has a larger nipples it's a male dog owners concerned if anybody else out of the laundry black teddy puppies or the um any of the black teddy puppies have puppies there's 25 puppies out there if anybody have a puppies and they notice that they male puppies nip i don't mean and this is real y'all I don't mean to be graphic. I hope I can say this on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not trying to be a joke. It's not a joke. I actually posted it. Okay, I'll show y'all. Y'all know where I did. I know what I did. And now we can see uh, what we what I did. So <clears throat> some pictures of the pups. Pictures of the issue. Show y'all this. Oh no. Hold on one second. Just give me one second. Bear with me. It's really, I, I want y'all to see this because I don't want you to think I'm making this up, I'm trying to be the funny or nothing like that. It's a legitimate concern, and we want to be with you. We, we, we here with you. You know what I'm saying? Exotic Boy was is Jordan. I'm not the kind of person that's going to tuck my tail and duck you or hide or nothing like that. I mean, not saying that, you know. But that's I don't feel like I feel like I like transparency. And so we're gonna show this. Hold on, y'all. Just give me one second. Let me get locate this because I did post it up literally. <gasps> oh, this was another dog. It looked like he was having puppies. I thought it was it. But no, I'm gonna show y'all this dog. Oh wow. Every single dog that they showing with these, and I'm thinking that it's the dog. It's got these. Uh hold on one second. I'll find it. Hold on one moment. Just bear with me. I want y'all to see this so y'all don't think that I'm joking because it is real. Okay, here we go. Found it. Okay. Who read it in? And my window phone. Oh. Here he is, y'all. Wow. Y'all see my face down there? I'm in disbelief. I can't believe it. And so uh we're gonna be following this closely, y'all. Dead serious. This is a male pup, and uh that's another view. That's another view via FaceTime. I'm in touch with my peoples, y'all. 
because I'm care. I care about my pups, you know, and I'm willing to go down and go get the pup and bring it back. You know, I don't want her to feel like embarrassed. She she says she's embarrassed. And I understand, you know, you got boy dog working around with but we don't know what's going on. It could be environmental. We got to do some tests. We here though. Pancake. Pancake. So anyway. This is that's the situation that we got going on, and uh, that's a couple pictures of the issue. Uh, we posted that up. I like to run the Facebook every now and then. Some of these groups. This is the first nine. It's got forty six thousand people, and it's not that I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for clues. So uh, that's that's why we, I don't know. That's 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 not it. That's not it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so it's not that it's not that we looking for answers, we looking for clues. I mean, we're not going there and look at it. Don't expect nobody. That is unusual. It is unusual. Hey, so if anybody else is going through this, we want to know: is this hereditary? Is this genetic? You know what I'm saying? Is this a one-off? Is it environmental? Um, you know, let's let's uh, be transparent. Anybody else got it going on in their blinds, or has anybody else seen that? Um. <clears throat> so. Where we at? Okay, let's get to a couple questions. I see this one question. How would you get consistency in your lines and your family of dogs without line breeding and inbreeding selectively? Because there are many families of dogs in a breed, just popular sire breeding. So we trying to answer this question. How would you get consistency in your family of dogs? Hella estrogen in the tap water. That is a good question. That is a good uh, suggestion. There you go. How would you get consistency in your family of dogs without line breeding and inbreeding selectively? Because there are many families of dogs in the breed, just popular sire breeding. Okay. So what I think he's saying is there's a lot of people just pop breeding towards a popular sire, right? And you can do that, right? But what you're going to have to do is select actively select through your puppies whatever criteria that you're looking for you know you had that's why people had you had to have an idea of why am i putting these two dogs together before you even decide to do that you don't want to just be putting dogs together and saying and then just because i'm trying to sell puppies because when you do that nine times out of ten first off starting out you're not going to just sell no puppies you're going to be stuck sitting with a few puppies Especially if you're trying to get the market value. If you're not selling your puppies from the very beginning, you ain't got no progeny. You ain't got no puppies to show where you came from or you don't got a super high stud, uh, stud dog that's off your own dog or that you, you're working with that you're using that's proven. Then guess what? Plan on sitting on your dogs or or uh, don't or discounting them. And that's okay. It ain't nothing wrong with doing that. What you need to do is get your focus on getting your dogs in the highest quality homes where the environment is going to be, you know, where allow the puppy to thrive. And then you can at least get good information based off of, you know, the owner's reports, observations, and you got to get it taken into consideration the day to day, um, how the dog is living, but you able to, how that's how you're able to get the consistency by actively seeking out those dogs that fit this criteria. And then eventually, if you keep seeking out big heads, let's just use that as an example. Not that it matters because the dog's going to have bigger heads anyway. But then your average dog, they're going to have bigger heads than your average dog anyway. But if you're, getting, if you're seeking out big heads, you chase the next dog with big heads. You're going to select the puppies with the big heads, two, three puppies that you think have the big head genetics. And I say two, three puppies because you, the first puppy that with the big head may not be the one that's throwing the big head. And as a breeder, you need to consider that. Now, the dog with the, because that's how the genetics work sometimes. It could it could skip a generation and they, and they tend to do that. So it's not always, that's why size is elusive. So we don't really use that as a selection criteria. We want to go more so for overall balance and structure if you start to use size strictly you could be you could uh lose out i'm gonna give a good example would be joku 
our young pup, which was the largest puppy in the litter by a pound out of a litter of 16 puppies, but he ended up being one of the smaller males. So that didn't, uh, and I don't, we don't know how much, what all ended up, you know, causing that, but that was the way that the cookie crumbled. And so size is not, we still include Joku in our program and feel like he's a very valid dog and the dog worthy of mention, because if you look at Joku, he got extremely athletic physique. He's one of my favorite dogs. You've seen him in the videos. He on point, he up. He got a, he got a lot of spirit and he's not oversized. And I know he can go the distance. So um, yeah, that's what I'm actively seeking out. And that's what I had thought that he would make him worthy as a stud dog work um, because he was just jumping around, running around, jumping on all of the puppies from the like when he was like five weeks old. You know what I'm saying? And I, I would pick him up and I would stroke his uh, coat and he would just growl at some time. And I like this dude, dude I'm, I, you know, so we, me and him had a good relationship. And I started doing, I, I like to exercise or do repetitions, uh, you know, mild forms of stress. So maybe like I would mash his head down a little bit and then he would force him to uh, pick it up, make it heavy. Definitely is unusual. So uh, we, that's, that's uh, pretty much sums that up as far as uh, consistency in your lines. The only way you're going to get consistency in your lines is by actively seeking out your desired traits for multiple generations. We like to get a lot of generations on the ground. We like to get a nice plan field of a variety of a selection of puppies so we can really see what we're working with. And then we can make our uh, uh, active selections based on that. So um, that's how you pretty much do that. And it's really all about development and maintaining and observation. Because it really develop your own bloodline, um, you're going to have to go with, you need a lot of dogs, right? You need a lot of dogs because genetics are very complicated and you're not going to be able to always get that dog in one, you know, you're not going to just be able to pick it from the, uh, as a puppy, you know, because things change as the puppies grow. And especially with boar bulls, they grow fast, they grow big, they grow tall, they grow wide. They got a lot of different growth rates. And you want to be able, you want to observe the final, final dog at really around two or three years old. And the only way to do that, that I'm able to do that is by having a great family and great owners and great people that I work with. And that's why I'm here to help. And if anybody got any more questions, we're going to take them. We'll answer the questions now. Uh, my main man Chuck, he has a uh, he has a, a possibility where he thinks that environment we gonna see with the necessary in regards to the puppy with the nipples. Um, that's a Sheba's Sheba daughter, a Sheba's son. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. So it all depends. It's, it's all depends. It's a one off. Sometimes it happens. Um, but I appreciate the comment as always, family. I mean, appreciate you rocking with us and everybody rocking with us. Uh, James Murray says that's unusual. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody that uh joined us on the chat and uh mentioned. Have I ever heard of ACI deficiency in borbles? No, let me see what that is. ACI deficiency, ACI deficiency, and uh, I will be curious as to why. Um, why you asked that though, are you experiencing some issues that lead you to believe that that could be something um, causing uh, that that could be an issue with your dog? The fish, let's see. Never heard of it though, never heard of it. Never heard of it within the breed and never heard of it as a a dog thing at all. I don't know what it is, but uh, I will do some research and I will get back with you. And uh, on that next week, I have never heard of an ACI deficiency. I will definitely do some research because I just, I like to know. And I think you could never, never hurts to just know to be on the lookout if there's something that is 
we need to be and i feel like this, see this is the problem that i feel like that's going on in our community too you hear people saying that we have issues within the breed you hear people saying that they're not getting healthy i don't see that with um but if it's happened well i have seen that remember we lost the dog to a couple of dogs to the heat alpha and uh these dogs should be able to go you know what i'm saying some lines some some lines and that and nothing wrong you know but this is something that within those lines is, is they, there's a concern sas sub aortic stenosis with the heart and uh that's off of the havoc lines and i think people need to be more transparent or there's been questions about that and i think people need to be more transparent as far as responsibility to exchange just information and be 100 percent transparent and let people know what's going on with their dogs if they have issues you know what i'm saying and that way we can eliminate them because we are already working with a very limited gene pool and it's important to use the dogs that are strong and vigorous and healthy but i got my methods i got my techniques and i feel like a, the exotic line is here to stay we're gonna be here for a while because we ain't not we not playing around or y'all was uh when, when we're going to be grinding all the time. And I know for a fact that when uh, I'm sacrificing my Fridays and Saturday nights out with my dogs hanging out, having or just relaxing and watching the dogs do their thing, I wonder if there's the other breeders doing that. And I hope that they are because we definitely giving it our all. So with that being said, we're going to cut this episode short for the, uh, we ain't cutting it short. We're going to fin finish it with that. If anybody else got any questions, we I'm happy to answer. Um, we, Jason had mentioned talking about raw dog food and feeding the dog. okay hold on y'all somebody got a question i'm very interested okay ricardo good question i'm very interested very very interested in let me see if i can show this i'm very very interested in breeding borbles i rescued a male borble from a guy that lived in an apartment I'm currently in the process of getting him akc paperwork what advice do you have well i would consider the dog if you say I rescued and you're in the process of getting them paperwork, that is a tough one, okay? Because I don't know how you would be able to get paperwork. And if you're going to use a dog as a breeding dog, you want to be able to clearly establish the dog's so bloodlines, where does he come from, and what is those dogs known for producing, or how are they, you know, you want to, that you need some kind of blueprints. You would like to, I will, you know, hope to have some if you're going to start off. That paperwork is important because other than that, you don't even know if you really have a borble. I mean, it, you know, nine times out of ten, okay, you can identify the dog from um, the look, but you still need very. It's more more to it if you're going to consider using this dog as a breeding dog. Uh, you would like to know about the family history because you remember, like I think. It, those words should be used interchange, interchange more oftenly. Family and breeding lines and borable line, blood lines and borable and blood borable blood lines should really be considered as more families of dogs because that's truly what it is, families of dogs. And when you talk about inbreeding and line breeding, that's breeding within the family or dogs that are related. And we try to keep that as distant as possible unless we feel like uh, we got something very special. And only in rare cases do we decide to do like close breedings that or that's what to um really solidify our lines because if we would like to preserve the genetics other than that it's not something that we would do consider uh consistently but we have done it and uh i feel like the results the best results that you're going to obtain is when you breed dogs that are unrelated that are similar in type and have a consistent look that's going and, and and known to produce those traits reoccurring so um you got to get somewhere to start because you want to know what are the ancestors producing what what dogs in his pedigree 
are you looking at when you're looking at this dog that you have before your very eyes? You're not able to do that without the paperwork or at least you need knowledge of the history. If you're not able to get knowledge of the uh, lineage, then I would advise you to find another dog. And then, and, you know, if you consider it breeding, I would go with a reputable breeder and I wouldn't um, look beyond the cost. If you're really serious about this, you know, you want somebody that's going to stand behind the dog or an owl or even consider a, a adult dog uh, because adult dogs, you have, you know what the dog is. And then you would really take into strong consideration. How has this dog been raised? And is he going to be able to fit in with what your, your lifestyle and uh, whether you, you're going to be able to manage this dog effectively because we're talking about a big dog. So you're using a bore ball, a bigger bore ball for the start off a bloodline. You want to be sure that you can manage the dog effectively. And I would not spare no cost. So for the right dog, it's, it's the best that I could afford. So for the right dog, and it's no cost uh, that I would not spare. And I would like for to have somebody that's going to stand behind their dog, understanding that what I'm trying to do is breed dogs. And now they're going to stand behind the dog in case that the dog doesn't work out the way that is expected. Because that's, hap that's, that's known to happen. You know, your expectation might not be with the dog final, final result. So that's my advice to you, Ricardo. I hope that helps. Anybody else got some more questions? Let me see. If anybody else got more questions, that's it. But I uh, hope that was informative for you, Ricardo. And I'm have, always happy to help. Blackheart Sounds. See, so you all appreciate you always willing to share. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that also. Because I am here to share, you know, and that's what me doing my community my uh giving back i would like to be a representative that of a what a good example of a breeder well for somebody to try to be well you know no not even try to be what i'm doing what i'm doing i want somebody to go higher in this scale go even um further studying the female for your stud what are the key things that's a good question james no problem ricardo james Murray says, when selecting the female for your stud, what are some key things that you look for when you before you start breeding? Fertility. Number one is fertility. you got to have a fertile female if you're expecting or a line that's known for big litters or fertility if you're expecting to have any uh, success. So you, you want to go with a dog. You want to go with a dog that's known for their productivity. And, um, well, if you can't find that dog. And I also like for a female to be real feminine, have a healthy, healthy, healthy appetite. So I would like a female that is going to, you know, really be able to be healthy. If you notice with all my females, they don't have any problem carrying their weight. And they, uh, they tend to be on the heavier side when they're carrying puppies. But I feed them well and they got a healthy appetite. So that's that's important. Uh, you see my my number. And so I will talk about that. But uh, when selecting your female, I want to make sure that she got a real healthy, healthy, healthy appetite coming from a mom to have a healthy appetite. And I want her to be feminine. I don't want a female with a big giant head and a big strong neck and a big muscular back and a big you know what i'm saying exaggerated i don't like that i like a female that look super duper fine and cute and like a real like you know gentle but is capable of uh protecting you know like it's nothing nothing to joke no joke you know what i'm saying but she she's not for the heavy lifting if you know what i mean she calls in the big dogs for the heavy work one of them type of female what's going on Ra? what's up with my bro but yeah, that's how we doing it. If, if we, we we like to get uh we come up with the more um for the females, we like the female to be, and then we want to complement our stud. So if I got a taller stud, I'm looking for something more uh to balance that out. And I, I tend to try to match energy. 
I, I tend to try to match the energy of the dogs. So I'm looking for a dog with a level of energy to, to balance out. So, uh, or I'm exert, observing. I like, you know, that's a key factor to consider because remember, we want we want a dog that we can put muscle on, we can work out and we can develop into his ultimate potential as a, a you know, like a, the ultimate athlete, um, athletic mastiff. And in order to be able to do that, we need energy. So that's going to be one or two of them, either the mother or the father and all my uh, dogs going to have to have some energy, energy, some type of drive, some type of uh, temperament, the strength in the temperament. And then I'm also, so you, you also, so yeah, I would look for something because if you're looking for your female, I, I'm assuming that it's your first dog and you want to make sure that the female is a dog that is, uh, you can, produce a uh you know generation to generation to come i would look for an adult female around 11 to 12 months 9 to 12 months that somebody feel like because i see i feel another thing uh good and this is a tip everybody pay attention to this right here especially all aspiring breeders uh, you can reach out to breeders and they may be unhappy with a dog around 9 to 10 11 months Right, because the dog is a puppy, is adolescent, and he could be getting on the, the person' nerves. That's a, a good opportunity to seize the dog, to seize the moment, right? Because the uh, the this the breeder have expectation for the dog. He kept the dog back, and then decide at the, that time to sell the dog. Well, you got to be able to trust your instincts. You got to be able to trust your research. You got to be done did your homework. So when you step up and it's time for you to answer that question, is this the dog for me? You can do it with complete confidence and you can bet on yourself. You don't make well, you, know, you you ain't gonna always uh, come up every time you bet, but you got the good chances if you make sure you do your homework and did your research. So um, another thing I would I would look at a, a, dog, a, a established breeder and I would look for a nine to 10 month old female, you know, that, is from a reputable line or a sire and dam that I figure worthy of contributing to my bloodlines. Nine times out of 10, a lot, well, a lot of times what we like to do, I like to keep back two, three, four specimens for observation. If I can, I'm going to be watching them from a distance and I like to see how they develop. Once they finally develop, then, you know, sometimes they don't always make the cut. But I uh, most nine times out of ten, they fit in some type of way, uh, especially with a female. But the males, um, well, with the female, you want to make sure you want to. So I may be willing to, I may be willing to part ways with them, and then just because it doesn't work out for me doesn't mean it won't work out for you or the next person, or um, you know, they may be looking for blue dogs. Just to use that as an example. And this dog isn't blue, so it doesn't, you know, or doesn't doesn't look like it's gonna produce the hue of blue. Some people are very particular like that with their breeding programs. You'll find out, and that's why it's good to talk to your breeder and have questions. What are exactly is your um, expectation for this litter? If you, um, so some people are just looking for colors. You may be able to come up on a female that's older that could fit into your program, and that's how I would shop. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate to go for a young pup. I would hate for a young pup, you know, to turn out unex unexpected, and they do. They will do that. A puppy would turn out not as you desire and not as you expected because they go through so many changes. And you're looking at a puppy at eight weeks old. Well, I'm looking at a puppy from birth. Nine times out of ten, my, well, I'm going to say 80, 80 percent of the time, 90 percent, really most of the time, 99 percent of the time, I say that. I bet on me like that. I could look at a dog. I could pretty much know from the my, especially from my puppies, my litters. From I done seen them enough. They all related. We got a beautiful litter on the ground right now from Pancake, uh, from Kai Chaos. Well, yeah, I, I I'm watching them. You gotta watch them. We are gonna get. We gonna get. We gonna find. Mako definitely gonna be in the desired. Mako definitely. <laughs> my man is looking for a mate. 
uh for Mako. Hey y'all follow him on Instagram. James is dedicated with his dog, doing a whole lot with Mako. It's an outlaw son. He just turned one years old. It's the half brother to this dog that we got in the background right there. It's half brother to him. He is very exciting. He's in North Carolina or South Carolina. He's in the Carolinas. And y'all could holler, holler at him if y'all in the area. Make sure y'all check him out on Instagram, Mako the Borble. Fire dog, young dog. We got high expectations. See, and that's what I'm talking about, watching your project need develop, keeping in contact with your people. You know, you want to consider, you consider your dogs as family. If you truly mean that, that means you're going to check on your fam. With that being said, y'all, I hope y'all enjoying the episode. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of the day. And um, I hope that I was able to inform you some type of way. I hope that you walked away with something that you didn't have when you got here, if you paid attention the whole time. And uh, if not, I'm going to try better next time. I'm going to make sure that I, uh, hey, listen, you got to pay attention if you didn't walk away. I, I, if you don't walk away with something off of that one, if you ain't walk away with something off of that one, that's this, uh, you got to go back and rewind. Because I was, I, I definitely, um, I think I answered a few questions on that. And, uh, hey, listen, it's going to get better and better every time, y'all. I'm having fun. I'm just feeling this. I'm getting. I'm feeling like it's working out. And uh, from where we first started to now. And I didn't even, um, you know what I did today? It helped me out. And I'm going to just share this with y'all. I just went with it. I didn't even, I just said, you know what? I'm going to bet on me. And I'm going to go, I'm going to sink or swim with this one. And I didn't even um, blink. I didn't even think to do no whole lot of research. I, um, I, I Well, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of research. I appreciate everybody with the questions that helped just make the episode more informative. If y'all got more questions, we're going to be answering a lot of questions. That's what the, that's what this is all about, answering questions. Questions and answers. That's We are about solutions and getting the, to the bottom of things and getting the problem solved. Questions, and, and that's the only way you're going to be able to get that done it's through questions and answers. So when this comes to these boar balls, boar balls, holler at the Borble King. <laughs> That's me, y'all. <laughs> I'm the Borble King now. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be. I would like to be the Borble King if y'all could crown me. If I could get one person to agree, then now we're going. That's what I'm on. Well, you know what? I'm already the Borble King because Maserati Rick told me that I was the Borble King. So I'm the Borble King now, y'all. And if anybody have questions. I'm happy to help. I appreciate y'all for joining. Without y'all, it would be no me. And I'll be back next week. And I'm going to leave y'all with this. Don't forget to give it your all. Go and hey, listen. We live in breathing, eating boar bowls around here. Every single day, all day, as it's on my mind, I go to sleep thinking about breeding dogs. And like, if I did this dog to that dog and that dog to that dog, I'm thinking about these puppies and that puppies. That's how it go for me, y'all. And then with that, I'm going to leave y'all. Give it y'all all. Give it your best. Max out. You know, when you hit, if you exercise and do as many as you can, you know what I'm saying? Get ready. You might not have another chance. No rush, go on, move dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love turn to peace and gloves. Now you got a deal right now. No rush, go on, move dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love turn to peace and Now you got a deal right now. Go again. Go again. Go man. Go man. Old, school. Old school. Young jam.